<laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Progressive Soup. Uh, my name is David Stevenson, co-host with Gene Hislop. Our guest tonight is Al Robinson, or as people prefer to call him sometimes, Alfonso Robinson. <laughs> and we're going to talk about local politics and uh, uh, some of the things uh, that uh, our mayor in Danbury, Mark Bowden, has accomplished or not accomplished over the years that may bode, may bode poorly for the state of Connecticut should he be elected to lieutenant governor. Okay, uh, Al, first of all, introduce yourself. Give us a little background of who you are. Yeah, sure. And then um, we'll talk. Well, thanks a lot for having me on the show again. Uh, I think this is my third appearance on your show. We talked The last time I was here, we talked about citizen journalism. A little background about myself. I've been in Danbury since 1987. I uh, attended Westcon, and um, from there I dabbled in different branches of journalism. And because of the advent of the Internet and because of blogging, I was able to bring my journalistic skills into the blogging arena. Um, I started Hat City Blog back in July of 2005, and I've been covering Danbury politics ever since. So I've been trying to keep an eye on what's happening down at City Hall because um, my, main, my, my major concern was that um, as the years went by, especially after the, the, the term of Gene Eriquez, the, the coverage of local politics or poli- uh, stuff that happened down at City Hall decreased significantly in the newspapers. So we were unable to get the usual you know, um, news about ad hoc committees, stuff that happened in planning or in zoning commissions, or stuff done at City Hall on a regular basis in the News Times. What has happened to the News Times? What, why, what has caused them and their coverage to deteriorate over the years? Um, I think it's a, a number of factors. Um, I think you could say maybe one, the, the, the fact that there aren't as many reporters as there were back during prior administrations, mm-hmm. um, for instance, during the Jim Dyer administrations during the late 1970s, uh, 1980s, excuse me, mm-hmm. um, they did extensive coverage on the whole Arketti fiasco. Yeah, um, they really, you know, covered very well uh, the falling apart of a sitting mayor mm-hmm. um, during the term of Gene Eriquez. I can definitely recall. Um, times where I can open up a paper and read about not only uh, common council meetings, but even ad hoc committee meetings. You had you had somebody there who was a beat reporter whose responsibility was to just cover news at City Hall. Explain to the audience what a beat reporter is. Well, uh, a beat reporter is basically um, you have different genres of the newspaper. You have hard news, you have politics, you have sports, mm-hmm. um, entertainment, you know, and um, you have police and fire. You yeah. might have a beat reporter that might cover City Hall, which is which means that person's responsibility is primarily to cover anything that happens at City Hall. You might have a reporter who covers the police and fire beat, which is which means they'll cover anything that's related to f- police or fire. Uh, sports and, you know, it goes down that, that route. So are you saying there is no longer one reporter at uh, the Danbury News Times, for instance, covering City Hall specifically? Um, in a nutshell, yes. You, you used to have like beat reporters whose responsibility, you, you, and again, you would go in there, you can pick up the paper, you can look through the archives, you can find ad hoc committees, planning commission, zoning commission. These people's responsibility was to stay in there every single day in mm-hmm. City Hall and mm-hmm. just find out what was going on and just report on that. You don't have that anymore. You're, you'll be very, very, very lucky. Like, for instance, we have the Lee Farm uh, mm-hmm. thing that's happening right now. Mm-hmm. Um, that's getting significant coverage because there's an uproar within the community about mm-hmm. what's happening here. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they'll cover that. But there's a lot of other things that happen in planning and, and zoning that's not being covered that you don't normally hear, which you used to hear years prior. Now, I remember even last year talking, I, I believe there was some discrepancy with Jean Natalie, um, who is a town clerk, right? And she was not reporting things on time. Is it possible that there's a collusion between... You know why those things aren't showing up in the newspaper. Well, I think and perhaps I think, correlation think, might be a more appropriate okay. word than yeah. Correlation. Between. Well, I think I think there's there's a little difference. Now. I I wouldn't necessarily that they're um, say that they're avoiding the covering of stuff like that. I would I would say that in prior administrations, when you had a beat reporter, the stuff that Jean the t- Natalie mm-hmm. the the city clerk okay. did. Mm-hmm. 
and it's continuing to do, would be highly reported, and you would see that on probably the front page of the News Times. I, I, rec- I can tell you that um, something was done with a city clerk in Massachusetts, which is very similar to what the current city clerk is doing here in Danbury mm-hmm. in terms of the number of weddings that she does, yeah. that the uh, city clerk did under the weekdays and most of the time under city time. That was reported in a two-page article up in Massachusetts. They got no coverage here in Danbury whatsoever. But I would guarantee you if it was in prior years when there was beat reporters or mm-hmm. uh, people covering City Hall more extensively, that would have been covered and it would have been picked up by the po- picked up in the paper. Referring more specifically, though, as far as posting town meetings in a timely manner to the newspaper, is it more that the newspaper isn't covering those things, or is it more that City Hall isn't, you know, reporting them in time? In other words, to get them published. No, there's, there's a state. There's 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 um, laws that that require. Um, that you have to post a meeting 24 hours prior to the scheduling of an event, mm-hmm. and it has to be posted in the paper with a similar s- circulation of the uh, uh, the news. When you publish it, you have to publish it within a newspaper that has the circulation that is close rep- closest represented to the population of the city. Mm-hmm. And we have several newspapers in Danbury, but the News Times has the closest circulation to the population. Mm-hmm. So there hasn't really been a, an issue with publishing or posting stuff. In fact, there is probably one. Um, that I can recall a little a while back. But again, the, the biggest problem you have now is not the posting. It's, it's actually people, reporters, going down, spending the time to report on issues that are happening at City Hall. Again, mm-hmm. people usually think about, uh, when you think about City Hall, you think about the City Council or the Common Council mm-hmm. meetings. Mm-hmm. You'd be amazed how little that really has to do with what's happening in Danbury, especially when it comes to issues such as overdevelopment, and um, like zoning. zoning laws and, and, mm-hmm. and buildings that just pop up out of nowhere and, and mm-hmm. condos. That comes down to your zoning commissions meetings, your planning commission meetings, uh, mm-hmm. ZBA meetings. Those are the really important meetings that you really want to keep an eye on. The city council or the common council meetings are usually just a, a dog and pony show. Mm-hmm. Those are already taken care of and, and, and caucus meetings, all this and stuff is everything's all Everything's ironed out in advance, and it's just a yeah. formality of coming and voting on it. It's a formality. You're just smiling for the cameras and uh-huh. just doing a lot of show. Now, now, Gene's our resident expert on immigration. With the issues with, uh, with Mayor Boughton and immigration and how those might play out on a statewide basis after the potential of an election of uh, Tom Foley and Mark Boughton, as governor, lieutenant governor, t- let's talk about that a little bit. Well, uh, well it, I guess the, the main issue in terms of immigration, um, I just want to bring it back a little bit to the, to the, the, the news times and the current coverage that we mm-hmm. have here and bring it to a, a wider um, wider conversation on Good. citizen journalism and the lack of quality reporting mm-hmm. here in Danbury because in terms of immigration, it is my belief and the belief of many who have followed and actually followed and listened or in my case videotaped and documented the statements from this mayor over the years Mm -hmm. that the public is not getting a true picture of this mayor when he speaks about stuff in regards to immigration, especially when he flip-flops or makes crazy statements or misleading statements or just, in my opinion, flat-out lies. Does he reach out to certain populations of immigrants to the exclusion of others, you think? Well, I'm I'm not quite sure, but it's just for me, again, that's not really my... My main concern. Mm-hmm. My main concern is strictly that the residents of the city of Danbury is not getting the true story about what's happening at City Hall and what's happening with the mayor and his administration and his Republican colleagues in regards to uh, immigration. Because the News Times, in my opinion, is just not doing their adequate due diligence in covering what's happening here with a very sensitive topic that has, over the years, divided this community based upon ethnic lines, which is very unfortunate because Danbury was a city built on the back of immigrants. Absolutely, it was, it was, well, as, as is America. Right. Which, which, if I may you know, say, I've noticed that there's actually a lot more information, a lot more accurate information about what's really going on between the mayor and the immigrant um, community 
from the immigrant magazine specifically, in, and I will say not all of the immigrant uh, newspapers and magazines in, in Denver. Yeah, like the ones that give campaign contributions to the mayor. You yeah, that yeah, one. I we mean, won't name one, any names. I won't name any names. But you could. certainly. You could name names. That's okay. We will okay. Not. But, um, t like, for instance, um, Comunidad News does great reporting about what's really going on at City Hall and with the immigrant um, community, and that is a uh, Brazilian Portuguese newspaper. Um, and El Canalita, a Spanish um, newspaper, has done some very good articles about what's going on between Boughton and the immigrant community, which are not picked up on by the newspaper, well, Denver I, News Times, I mean. I guess one of the, w w those are great papers, and, and the, the problem with those papers is that, one, they have a very low circulation, and also, as you know, they're not the, the they're not written in English, mm -hmm. so you have to take the time to either a go online and translate this, or b have a working knowledge of the language so mm -hmm. you can translate it accurately. Because uh, you know, if you go into Google or some of those sites and just do a simple translation, it right. still doesn't come out properly because of the dialects mm -hmm. right. between the languages. But so, I've seen you over the years, if you don't mind me interrupting, speaking yeah. with the um, you know authors of these other I mean the uh, reporters in these other newspapers, and kind of trying to get their take on what's going on or what they've learned, what they've gleaned, and at least you've taken a look at it and and gotten some information. It would be very simple for the News Times to do the same or to find a Spanish speaking reporter to have on their staff at this point. Well, well as you know, there was a time, uh, there was a period in time, I think during the early 2000s, like around 2005, 2006, where they actually had reporters from those various newspapers that you described exactly. doing articles and pieces for the News Times. And, and those individuals eventually left for reasons that I don't want to get into right now because I don't know all the details. I don't want to make any accusations. But, but we might say it's left. mysteriously disappearing. Uh, well, you know, it, it is what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the fact remains is that um, you're just not getting an accurate depiction on what's happening in terms of immigration in Danbury from the mayor. Because the mayor can say one thing, mm -hmm. and it's not picked up in this paper here in Danbury, but for some reason it's picked up in other papers. And you, It's amazing how you can learn more information. For instance, the Danbury 11 case, in which we know very well that when mm -hmm. the Danbury 11 case unfolded, the, the mayor stated on Channel 8, Channel 30, and he stated to the Hartford Current that Danbury had played no role and knew nothing about this raid. We mm -hmm. played no role whatsoever in the, in the planning of this raid or whatever. Yeah, where as in fact, in retrospect, we know that they did. We, we know mm -hmm. they, we absolutely know. We absolutely mm -hmm. now know that they did, and, yep. and, and it was very involved. Um, the, the mayor gave a deposition in the Danbury 11 case recently, a few months ago, and Dirk Parafort uh, put out a article that was probably about, I'd say, about 400 words in regards to what happened in the deposition. Mm -hmm. they, actually, uh, they actually obtained a copy of the deposition. It came up about 400 words to, of, on a deposition that the people in the Danbury have been waiting for a very long time, especially mm -hmm. the people who felt that this whole entire raid was illegal and that the, the, the mayor and the city of Danbury overstepped their lines. Mm -hmm. um, we found out limited information in the News Times article, but Mary O'Leary from the New Haven Register writes an article based off the same deposition that's over 1,600 pages long, 1,600 uh, words. words long. Yep. It gives much more detail into the mayor's deposition. We learned a lot more about what the mayor stated in the deposition that doesn't quite wash what he said in the past. You don't get that in the Danbury News Times article, but for some reason in New Haven, from a reporter that I've never seen here in Danbury, we get extensive information about the deposition. And not only that, we get quotes from attorneys that defended past mayors, such as uh, Hugh Keyes, who is a past attorney, uh, attorney who defended James Dyer, mm -hmm. who just came out and said, well, what the mayor's talking about doesn't make any sense. Right. You know, we get that type of information. We get information about um, ICE agents and, 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 and uh, police officers saying that, yes, Danbury pressured, great pressure was placed on from, from Danbury to ICE to do something about this. And it went up to the mayor's office. There's a lot of information so, that went on here in this deposition that we still don't even know about because we don't have a copy of the deposition. But I can tell you that this little flimsy article from the News Times doesn't even scratch the surface on what was going on. So your feeling is that the News Times really glossed over a, a uh, very, very, a much very so. important local issue. Uh, I think it's probably the most important local issue in the mayor's tenure as mayor. Hmm. Um, another another big thing that that goes on here is that he he talks about how the mayor didn't really know about the fact that 
the individuals who were arrested were were booked, quote unquote, booked by Danbury police until like about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Well, this deposition was done in 2010. Uh, he said a year prior, so he said about a year ago. That means he knew about this in 2009. Which is quite odd because my recollection is when I did an article with the attorney mm -hmm. representing the 11 immigrants in the uh, deportation case, which is different from the civil case, they found out there mm -hmm. through an FOI, investig uh, FOI request that they Free finally obtained information, information yeah. that showed that Danbury Police, it's a booking report that shows Danbury Police were, were on the booking report. So we knew about some of the stuff that the mayor is talking about in his deposition back in 2007. Mm -hmm. And, and yet and the News Times did not the cover The News Times it. didn't even talk about that. And there's a lot of stuff going on in this case that's not being covered. The most importantly, it's just the fact that the mayor stated <laughs> right after the raid that Danbury had nothing to do with this raid. And now we know but that, that that alone is not true on top of a lot of other stuff. Can we, can we just so. highlight what you said and, and clarify it for some of our viewers? What you're saying is that at some point, Mayor Boughton said that they... That City Hall and uh, and the Danbury Police de Department were answering, you know, doing what they needed to do to collaborate with ICE because it was ICE's initiative. And in reality, now we find out from ICE and the police and other people that have been deposed that actually our Danbury's mayor was heavily at, uh, pressuring ICE to come to the city. Yes, he was very. He was pressuring ICE to come to the city for a long period of time. Okay. And again, the, the, when the mayor first made these comments, he made it seem like Danbury knew nothing about this raid. And then later on, after we find out that, you know, that the, the van that was used to pick up these agents was driven by a Danbury undercover police officer, mm -hmm. if you're doing a, a raid on day laborers at 6 o'clock in the morning and you're using a van and the Danbury police officer is driving the van, there has to be some type of planning prior. You just don't come into town, let's no. say, at 5 o'clock in the morning and say, hey, can I use one of your cops? Can you go down there and pick up some? It, police actions don't work like that. I've never seen it happen like that. It doesn't that. seem logical. No. It doesn't seem logical. So, it, it just go, again, it just, it just reinforces, the, in terms of the news times, in terms of the media covering this stuff, that when you have these questions that lay people can ask, and when you have these questions that myself can ask as somebody who's covering and videotaping this, I think it's incumbent upon reporters who should have alarm bells going off in their head to do a better job of reporting and ask more serious questions about these matters because in the end this could be a really serious matter for the city of Danbury. Even That's more right. troubling than the situation that happened with James Dyer years prior and what happened with those. With because, that, because it brings it, up civil rights issues. Civil and, rights, it talks, mm -hmm. it, we're talking like lawsuits. We've been to a number of lawsuits. Mm -hmm. We have the Danbury 11 case. We have a situation in which um, Lynn Tabrzak, who was the uh, Democratic Town Committee chairwoman, came on the show a, a, a while back and addressed, which was the fire fire lawsuit. Mm -hmm. which, that was last week, yeah. Which was uh, settled by the city of Danbury. Yep. Aldell, the mayor, said he wanted to defend this thing vigorously, and the city had, there was, we did nothing wrong whatsoever. And then we find out that the city settled for $450,000 on top of another, close to about another $200,000 in legal fees that was not talked about in the News Times articles. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of strange stuff that happened in that case that we still don't really know about because mm -hmm. all the city was quoted as saying is that we made some administrative errors. Administrative and when, errors? And when Dirk Parafort, huh. who again is the staff writer who does most of the political stuff around here, yeah. asked Mayor Bouton for a comment, he couldn't get Mayor Bouton for a comment. Yet two days later, he gets him on a comment on another story. But here again, this was a serious accusation that was that was brought up during the last campaign that Gary Goncalves brought up towards Mayor Bout and said, "Look, this is a serious problem that's going on here because we're talking about nepotism." Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get into the real details of the case. You can easily go to my website and you read all the particulars. You can read about how certain people are connected with certain city officials. Oh, and, and that's hatcityblog.blogspot.com, Hat City or just Google Hat City Blog, you'll get it. So th to make a long story short, this is, that was a very serious matter that somehow just got settled. Mm -hmm. And we still have plenty of answers. We have plenty of questions that are not been answered by city officials. And again, this is a serious matter where reporters should be, their alarm bells should be going off, and they should be doing their due diligence getting the answers to these questions from these elected officials. But again, we just gloss over these things, and because we keep glossing over these things, 
the, the public's not informed. And when you have a low informed public, you have a low informed voter. And that's very dangerous. And may we also say that, I mean, it seems to me that what you're saying is not only the danger is being misinformed, but really being misled if you're getting only a positive picture or only what, um, you know, little little glimpses of what the mayor's office might want you to see and you're not doing investigative, you're actually deliberately being misled. And right. And so this could be bringing it back to the immigration issue um, because that is, you know, my favorite issue. Um, it could be actually very misleading to the immigrant community um, right. statewide as he's running for a statewide office. Is they're not getting a full picture of his real relations with the immigrant community here in Danbury? Right. And, and when you have a situation where, and this is just my opinion, and an opinion of many. When you have a situation where you have a mayor that's so powerful that there is an a, a, a era of bullying people and bullying people who are in opposition to you, to either shut them down, shut them up, strip their funding for mm -hmm. outrageous, bizarre reasons. Mm -hmm. or, or threatened to. Or threatened mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. or things of that nature. It creates a climate of fear, a climate of fear so much that your advocate groups that came out in 2005 and did the immigrant marches on Main Street in 2006 and did the marches on Main Street are too afraid now to come out and do anything because of retaliation. Mm -hmm. And not only do they fear retaliation, which they, have, they should have a, they should fear retaliation mm -hmm. because they know that nobody's going to report on it. Mm -hmm. It'll go on deaf ears, and this stuff just goes on the hush. Right. Um, the Hispanic Center is a great example of some crazy stuff that went down, and suddenly they were just defunded because, in my opinion, they piled an ad and they spoke out against the ICE access program and a bunch of people who I consider a bunch of bullies didn't like the fact that a group was out there speaking against them, so they silenced them. And that creates a climate of fear throughout the entire immigrant community. Now, is it possible, and, and I mean, obviously I'm not asking you to, to say for certain what is happening, but in this climate, if that, if that is the climate that exists, and I'm not saying for sure that it does, but if it does exist, is it all possible that a person in such a place of power would actually utilize the very people that they're victimizing to speak out on his behalf in a positive way like you know what i mean yeah, to uh, well, you know th there's there's a there's a number of scenarios that can go down and you know you can again it's the whole bully mentality mm -hmm. you can just get away whatever you want because you've been getting away with whatever you want mm -hmm. so yeah i mean um he, he can go out to one group and say, hey, look, you know, make me the head of your uh, festival and, you know, mm -hmm. and wink, wink, you better, you know, or else. And they're like, hey, maybe we should do this. We can't right. do what happens if we don't do it. You know, but those, that's all hypothetical and those things could happen. But, uh, again, this all, comes, this, all, this all comes back to the people who are supposed to be the overseers of local government. Of stuff that's happening in, in in the area, which the are your dogs. journalists, right? I mean, the that's that's, that's basically their job. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to inform us, the taxpayers, about what's happening in our community because mm -hmm. we can't get around to all these events. That's but right. that's your job to go around to all these events and report on what's happening, so we can be better informed, so we can make a wise decision about our elected officials come election day. Now, is it possible that he, that uh, they are being pressured? to do less reporting? Or do you think it's more likely that they're just um, skating by because of budget cuts or, you know, whatever it is? Do you think it's well, more? Well, I, I, you know, it, it, can be, it can be a whole number of factors. And, and, and to be honest with you, I just don't know. I don't, I don't think anybody knows. Some people can say that, hey, look, you know, Wayne Shepard was the person down there running the News Times. Now he's the mayor's chief of staff. Mm -hmm. You know, or somebody could say, "Hey, Dirk Parafort, You know, maybe he's in bed with Bowden, and they're just two buddy buddies." Whoa, 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 whoa! That's that's not. Well, let's not be quite mean, so literal about I didn't being like that. But I'm just saying, <laughs> they can be friends. You know, right? Well, look, I, 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 I can tell you this: that there, there was a time not long ago, there, there were reporters that were actually reporting on what's happening down mm -hmm. there. Yeah, it was, in, and they did a good job, and now they're all gone. Yeah, you know, right. the reporters we have right now, all due respect to Dirk. And, 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 and it's writing, but I just don't think it's very good. I don't think he's doing a very good job informing the public, especially when you have an article that's done in New Haven mm -hmm. that's four times as big as your article. Yep. I guess more information about happening in Danbury than your article, but you're based in Danbury. And you had the same deposition. Well, with, so, with, with, with deference to Dirk, it's very possible that, that Dirk's being told how to write an article 
by his editor. Again, uh, like I said, there's a whole range of possibilities, mm -hmm. but the bottom line is the public is not being properly informed, in my opinion, about what's happening here at City Hall. Because again, I have a blog. Mm -hmm. I go around and I cover these meetings. Not only do I cover this stuff, mm -hmm. and it, again, it's a blog. It's an opinionated blog. Sure. You know, I could do hard news, but, but I don't do hard news because it just damn very drives me nuts sometimes. Mm -hmm. you know? and I, just, mm -hmm. I can't just do it on hard news because, you know, it's just too crazy. But whenever I make my opinion, I always, and I really want to, and so reinforces the this people that very I always, important point to I, know. Go ahead. I always support everything that I say with either the actual video footage from the meeting, yep. sometimes in its entirety, or documentation to back up what I'm saying. You know, and, and that's important in my opinion because I always want to give people as much information as possible so they can form their own opinion. For instance, the Danbury 11 deposition. Wouldn't it have been very nice for the News Times just to release the deposition, mm -hmm. including Mike McLaughlin's on deposition? On their website? On their website. So, we so can people, read what, people want to read in the entire thing. Absolutely. So we don't have to keep listening to the mayor's, so we can judge the mayor's opinion in the past, his mayor's statements in the past, based, based on upon words. what he said under based oath. On and the exact same thing with Mike McLaughlin, because he's right there with him. Mm -hmm. and, but we don't have that. And you have to wonder what's going on when, again, somebody in New Haven can write an article in more detail by the, the factor of four mm -hmm. than what we're getting in the News Times. You know. One thing that is interesting to me, too, is that when I have seen recent interviews with Boughton or, uh, like, sound bites in his interviews, he will directly conflict with something that the News Times reported on, say, two years ago. I will bring up, like, the, the protests regarding the 287G. You know, the newspaper, the News Times was there reporting, and originally they had shots, and, and they said exactly how many people were there, which right. was... In the thousands, you know, easy. I mean, easy. In the thousands. And and yet, in recent articles, where Boughton has questioned, it all of a sudden became a few hundred people. And the News Times did not stop him at that moment and say, um, "It's interesting that he said that because original numbers said and, in the thousands." So, and as you uh, and as you recall. Um, I went to the meeting. I, I went to all the events. I went all to, to all. The, I went to the ice access protest that was happening outside. Okay, the city we're going to have to cut it off there. Oh, okay. We're we're we've come to the end of our show. <laughs> okay. One more quick point, and then we'll yeah. and then we'll sign off. Well, again, it, it's just, I think it's incumbent upon everybody to do your due diligence, look beyond what's, what you're reading in the news times, find other avenues of information. There will be new forms of journalism in Danbury and in Bethel very soon. So hang in there. Uh, the Danbury patch, the Bessel patch will be here to save the day. And just really question what you read here in the News Times because it is a problem. And if you don't have the information, you can't make an objective or smart vote come election. Well put, objective thinking rather than we sometimes think of it as being critical thinking, but objective thinking is what we're looking for. Yes. Look, read, question. Investigate. Investigate on your own. On your own. Well. Think. Mm -hmm. Think. Thank you. So much thank for you, being Kevin. here, Rick. Thanks We're going to be with you again next week. And uh, with that, I thank you very much.